Well, hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us. We are bringing another uh, addictions and community conversation as it just continues to grow as we have topics to discuss. And so we want to bring you the idea, don't think we've talked about it, um, but the, the idea, the concept of depression in recovery. Um, and uh, in that, you know, it's right off the bat, I would say it's really, I think a lot of people like depression is a very universal approach. Like we all kind of go through seasons where we struggle through that. But connecting that to um, addiction and recovery, I want to, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that and, and kind of let that conversation grow from there. Well, I mean, so in active addiction, I think that um, most people are uh, not happy mm -hmm. and depression creeps in a lot. Um, you know, there tends to be suicides and, and things like that um, because they feel like they're stuck or whatever. You know, but I, I don't know that, that that's really um, what I wanted to talk about okay. in, 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 in active addiction, but more in the recovery part of it. Yeah. Um, you know, because the people that surround the recovering addict um, are going to see changes and, and differences and, you know, and sometimes you... Uh, want to you want to pick up on some of the clues of things that are um, going through that they're going through mm -hmm. and whether or not that it's something to be alarmed about or if it's just something that uh, you know that they're gonna go through right you know um, so I honestly I think that um, when uh, you get into recovery uh, you start to have all these feelings flood you, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and I think that, uh, depression can be intensified for a mm -hmm. period of time. Uh, you know, I, I guess maybe at, at any time in your recovery. Well, it, in, interjection, you know, I'm thinking about this, the idea of how, cause you mentioned uh, depression can be intensified. Yeah, could it could it be? And again, I'm I, like not experts. We're just concerned right. people with lived experience. Could could it be that that the reason why those feelings of uh, when you do experience depression, why it could be intense, more intense, it could it could relate to just what what has been the learned to deal with pressures in the past to deal with and go like on, on, a, on a, I think on like a chemical dependency uh, versus I can't go that route anymore to you know. It's like somebody who, uh, it's, okay, get the words from here out. Um, it, it, you know how when you become dependent on a certain thing to help you mitigate something, okay? Right. Think, um, I, visual, I, I think of examples. So if you ha are doing a lot of heavy lifting, you know, the military uses these things, but they have like exoskeleton suits that help you with the heavy labors that you work on, right? Like extreme conditions. And so you become, you, you basically become conditioned to work with something to, to aid your body in the chemical function. Um, and then when you remove that chemical aid, it's not an aid, it's destructive. Right. You remove that chemical aid to help, you know, your the chemical dependency and you remove that aid and now you're feeling more of the brunt. I don't know if that's off. Well, I, no, I, I, th I think you're on. I, um... I think there's kind of two parts to it. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, yeah, you know, when uh, when you're using, you're covering it up because you're using whatever that may be, drugs, alcohol, whatever mm -hmm. it is. So you're, um, you're not really feeling a whole lot of anything. Right. And, you know, so um, you take that away. And yes, you know, mm -hmm. if you're depressed, um, it, it can become more intense. Yeah. I also think that um, that by using the chemicals that like I have used, um, that it changed my uh, my brain, mm -hmm. and so uh, my thinking uh, is different also. So mm -hmm. it, you know, which takes time to get 
you back on track in the way well, you think? We talked about neural pathways yeah. in the past. Right. So, so as far as depression goes, you know, I mean, drugs are definitely not the answer. <laughs> right. You know, and um, and they've caused a lot of damage. And uh, so when you do start to feel, um, things can be much more intense at mm-hmm. times. You know, I'm not saying that it's con- can constant or consistent. Right. You know, for me, I went through a period, you know, where um, I was just depressed because, uh, well, first of all, it was because I wasn't getting high, mm-hmm. you know, and it was upsetting maybe to me. Um, and then it was about how do I, how do I counteract all the garbage that I did? Right. You know, because then you're on yourself. And then, you know, there was a period of, you know, can I really live this life? And, and you know, of recovery, because that can be a little upsetting and, and, and it can cause some um, for you to, um, to kind of go introvert, mm-hmm. you know. Um, you know, and, and I think in recovery that uh, depression presents itself a lot of times different than depression. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is that um, we tend to be a little more angry, mm-hmm. you know, because we don't know quite what the feelings are that we're having. Right. You know, so you, you have a tendency to be a little more angry at the world, you know, even though it's not the world's fault. Right. <laughs> you know, it's your own fault. But well, you're, 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 you're angry at yourself. You, yeah. You know, well, you, you're, the depression kind of becomes like this this kettle this petri dish of just a lot of emotions right. um that for many people are are learning how to deal with new emotions we kind of talked about that before about l- right. dealing with emotions and different things and um is it is it possible that even uh or we kind of touched on shame a little bit and i guess i want to kind of like see the differences there but um you know it is it is unique in seeing you know what being in the recovery side and coming through all of these things and looking at the past that, you know, the, 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 uh, a lot of dealing with the, uh, repercussions of what has happened can really impact in, in and put somebody's mind in a certain way, even though they're in the right direction, they're going in the right direction, but just looking at what's occurred can cause, and not not necessarily shame, but that depression that kind of comes in, right? And you know, um, you know, and kind of go back a little bit. It, mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it can present itself as anger, isolation. Um, you know, and and some people, which is what I would do, mm-hmm. is put on a face and it present itself like I'm overly happy or I'm overly okay with life. You yeah. know. And, you know, and it's not always detectable, you right. know, because we have, you know, well, I have a tendency to want to cover up some of that stuff and not really present it because, you know, I, I don't feel like it's anyone's business, you know, right. things like that. And, you know, for anybody that's, that's actually listening, who's had to deal with depression or is in depression or, um, or knows somebody or whatever, you know, um, that's the worst thing that you can do. So don't follow my, yeah. don't follow my path. You know, you're better off just going ahead and letting somebody know, you know, yeah. just let them know. Yes. Cause, cause when you get that stuff out, um, it doesn't feel quite as intense, you know, mm-hmm. uh, it's kind of like, you know, if I was carrying a hundred pounds in weight, you know, right. If I give you five pounds of it, well, that's a little bit lighter, you know, yeah. and, and that's kind of the way depression is because it can feel it is a, it's, it's a heavy feeling, yeah. you know, and, and it weighs you down and, um, you know, and it can, it can, uh, send it. I think this is not a fact. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I think depression is one of the, uh, one of the things that will really, uh, take somebody back to using, yeah. you know, and, um, you know, so it, it has to be addressed. You know, and, and there's different intensities for different people, Mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, the, the, 
the worst of it is those who uh, feel like their life is just there's no no value left. Yeah. And they take it, you yeah. know, and I've had friends do that and it, it sucks. Yeah. You know, cause you know, you're, you're finally in a spot where you're, um, where you're not doing what you used to do. Yeah. And if you just can ride it out yeah, a little bit longer, you know, cause that's really, you know, um, you, you'll get past that too. Yeah. You know, but uh, you, some people don't always see that they, they, you know, they can only see, um, to the, the day they're in or to the next day. And, mm -hmm. and in recovery, you're supposed to stay in the day. Yeah. So it's a little confusing about how that might work. Well, you can get stressed but, thinking about right, tomorrow. Right. Your mind is, your mind can sometimes be your worst enemy. So yeah. <laughs> if, if you can resist those kinds of thoughts, yeah. you know, because, um, the, the truth of the matter is, is they're not, they're not. Um, they're not the right thoughts, yeah. you know. Well, and, and I like how you brought it all up, you know, about about relieving and getting that help or, or you know, giving me five pounds out of the hundred, you know, they got lighter. Um, the, the other day I had my, my, my youngest with me. He just turned five last week. And so we've been having a lot of fun, um, busy, but really good fun. And um, he had a bottle of soda a while back. And you know, a five year old with a bottle of soda, what what's what's gonna happen, right? <laughs> Content under pressure. <laughs> I mean this thing you can you can pick up that bottle and you can do like little pinch test to see how much pressure's in there and it's a rock solid. You know, this is not gonna be a fun thing to open. <laughs> this is going to make a mess. And and you know, that's why I have this technique that I work, right? You sit there and you just crack, you just do a little crack test of right. let it let it fizz, slowly let the air out twist out a little bit more, a little bit more of the pressure out. So over time, you're slowly letting that pressure out so that the contents are not under pressure as they once were. And, you know, so that's the thing. Like, with depression, we, we tend to... Um, it's we, one we of those things... It right. It's because it's one of those things that I think that we... Uh, I, I hate it when I say we, but it's one yeah. of those things that um, seem to to cause shame as if, well, you know, it, as if there's think, nothing wrong with you because yeah. you're depressed. That's, there's nothing wrong with you. Well, and that's, and that's people thing. have emotions. I, and I think that's the thing too. Like there's a lot of people that go through depression. Right. Yeah. And, and, and even in my experience, I mean, there's times where like, Hey, m my household is no stranger to depression. You know, it, I don't think anybody's helped. No one's done that. And, and so, but again, the, I think the important thing is recognizing like our emotions whether we know how to handle them or not, they exist for a reason. And so when contents are under pressure, negative contents under pressure, and we, we might not understand what is causing that pressure, right. whether, whether it be anger, stress, uh, sadness, grief, shame. I mean, the whole flux of just negative pressure. And we want to hold that in and we're getting depressed because we feel that pressure. We don't know how to respond, and I think that's where the anger comes in. Like we don't know, so we're gonna we're gonna act out in anger. But I'm really, really, it's I'm I'm de I'm depressed. I'm down. Yeah. Something's got me. And I don't know even that it's that somebody would act out in anger. It's just that they're angry. Yeah, you know, and they're the only yes. ones who can know that. And that's a yeah know? better way of putting it. And so, like in recovery, obviously the goal is not to use any kind of mood altering chemical. Right. So that causes a problem when it comes to the depression because. Right. What happens is that um, a lot of us don't want to get back on medication or right. anything like that, you know, because you're like, well, I don't really want to do this because, you know, this was a problem for me. Well, and, and, and some people struggle with a chemical, like a chemical imbalance, just right. the body's chemical of dealing with a depression <laughs> right. and how that can impact things too. And so, you know, so when you're offered antidepressants mm -hmm. um a lot of people will turn them down some of them won't which which i i um commend them because mm -hmm. you know you're trying to take care of yourself and that's right. important you know and not all of us need medication right uh, but some people some will do. some will because their their brain is is so imbalanced that they need it yeah and and it's okay yeah you know that's that's okay to do as long so the the thing that 
that um, is talked about in the program that I'm in mm -hmm. is that um, if we ever do get medication, we use it as it's prescribed. And right. that's it. We don't overdo it. We don't underdo it. We we use it till like it's supposed meant to be used. Yeah. And then um, when it's done, it's done. You know yeah. what I mean? We don't chase it. We don't, you know, and that's a hard balance right. for, for an addict. You know, it really is. And, and, and I think that um, that's why it scares, yeah. you know, it scares some people. You know, for me, I, I never had issues with uh, pills. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times if I get medication that is, um, you know, mood altering in any way, mm -hmm. a lot of times it goes on my shelf and I never actually take it. Right. And then it goes in the trash, you know. <laughs> right. Because, you know, I, I don't know. I just, you know, I don't, I never like. Well, you never like pills and, and you know your limits too. And right. I, you know, I also know that, um, you know, if, if, it became intense, you mm -hmm. know, where I was using something that was, say, narcotic, mm -hmm. um, that it wouldn't be the problem. Right. But the problem would be that it would open the door for me to get to a problem. Yeah. Because then all of a sudden it's like, well, you know, I, yeah. Well, it's, I, it's just a messy situation. Well, and, that, and I think that's kind of the hard part, too, and why I think, you know, you talk about, you, as you said earlier, you know, they for some addicts it is an issue where they they don't want to pick pills again they don't want to go that way because for some for some people there is a really a very real chemical imbalance and they they do need to take those 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 prescriptions but but for some for others who uh, they might have that imbalance but for them that medicine is is a gateway you know, it's, it's, Hey, I, this is what I did in my past. And right. if, if I'm, am I, even though it might be, um, prescribed with the greatest of intentions for, for, for this, for the individual who's in recovery, they're looking at this and like, Hey, that, that is going to make this whole more experience much. It's going to make, it, it's going to make me much more susceptible to my old ways again. Right. You know, and that's, and I, so, it, and Part of that thinking yeah. is is um, is wrong, mm -hmm. you know, and but because we're new to it, a lot of times right. we don't understand that, you know, the way what I did because when I originally uh, got clean, I um, uh, they wanted to prescribe me with antidepressants mm -hmm. because I was depressed. Oh yeah, um, but I chose not to and. And I chose not to for a year. Okay. I thought if after that year, you know, I'm still feeling this way, then there's something wrong. You know what right. I mean? Which is a and, very, very smart decision on right. your on your side. Right. And so I avoided it, and it turned out for me. Now, right. th will it turn out for everybody? But and that's and that's know. that's where the individual body, right? The chemical balance of the brain. Right. That's where there's there's multiple like it's it's a spectrum for of people with different. Different imbalances, different right. ways of handling, different, well, individualized. And and I also knew that um, meth had screwed up my head so bad yeah. that it was going to take time for me to get it together. So yeah. relearning how to think. Right. So so my thought on that when when it came to me was that if I just replace it with something else, mm -hmm. then I'm not really healing. I'm just continuing that avoid um avoid the feelings avoid what i'm doing you know so but that's me as an individual that mm -hmm. that doesn't apply probably to anybody else you know i i don't right. know where they're you know where they're where they would be at um but i feel like uh that um for some people they really need to um to just get over that hump right and maybe some medication would help but that i and I think we kind of gotten off of what I what I was originally right. trying to get. To. Yeah, well, that's why the conversation grows, but changes. But right. Yeah, go, go ahead. Right. But so you know, depression is is a real thing, and yeah. it's uh, very intense at times. And um, for a recovering addict, it it can be very damaging, and so it's it's scary sometimes to to me because you'll see people come in the program 
and they're very happy and you know because we all kind of get on this little high because mm-hmm. it's like oh my gosh i can do this we're gonna do it I'm but strong. then but then life kind of hits you and yeah. and when that happens it can just put you right back down and then you don't know what to do well I, uh, and, we talk about just the influence of community on that you know right. when somebody gets to that program look at my strength look what i can do i'm in recovery and they re-enter life and their family doesn't understand it their family has preconceived missed notions and because of miscommunication oh my family doesn't get me lack of communication lack yeah yeah well not miss not miss, lack, lack. Of, yeah well, and that and that's the thing is like you 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 see that lack uh you see that lack and it you know it 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 can put people into a tailspin right you know and so like you you you're in recovery you're doing a great job but then what the the support is not where it's needed it's not where it could be or or this the individual feels it different right they're interpreting it differently and that just causes them just to knows that and that, that's kind of the recovering addict's fault mm-hmm. because you can build up your support mm-hmm. but you're the only one who can do it so you know yeah. it, it's it's kind of this double-edged sword you know like yeah. i i don't know how to do this but i'm the one who has to do this you right know what i mean and so that can be a, a, a an obstacle you know in recovery and you know Um, but it's an obstacle that if you just listen to what needs to happen and, you know, um, because they have all these little sayings, you know, Mm -hmm. in, in recovery and everything else. And they have, you know, like meetings on on a daily basis and, you know, get a sponsor, you know, if you just do the things that, that, that they're saying, they're saying it for a reason because they've had to go through this too, you know? And so, you know. Um, what's sometimes, what is the best way to get through depression is to be around people, Yeah. period. You yeah. know, it just, it doesn't matter, you know, but being alone, uh, can cause some real damage yeah. because you're, yeah. you're stuck in your own thoughts and it's a dangerous place to be, you know, you, you, you don't want to, you don't want to isolate that depression is that I'm going to isolate. Right. That's a very the real thing. But I think the big thing too, is that, you know, not being alone, like you were saying earlier, especially with the person and going through the recovery, starting to feel these depression, these depressing thoughts, going through these, this uh, emotional turmoil, you know, feeling all that, having somebody to, um, to come alongside them. And, and, uh, and, and this is where you need, I, and I'm thinking that at the very least, at the very least, just that one person who's not, they're going to give you this. I'm going to say it this way. They call them a sponsor. They call them a sponsor. It, 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 someone who's going to give you a short leash, right? You know, and and that sounds really terrible to put it that way—a short leash. But that's and that's the idea of, you know, I'm not going to let you get too far. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to let you go underwater. Yeah. I'm not going to let you go back to old patterns. I'm not going to let you. Uh, I'm not going to let you hurt yourself. You know, and they and they put that short leash on you, and they're like they call you. They're 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 pursuing you. Hey, how are you doing? Do you, do you need anything? Do you want to go hang out? Do, you, do we need to do this today? Or, you know, and that, you know, sponsor, that friend, that accountability partner who says, hey, I'm, I'm here. I'm not letting you go down that old direction anymore. Well, so I kind of have an opposite view of that. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. Um, that, different and, perspective, yeah. So uh, being a sponsor, um, it's not your responsibility to take care of that person. Right. And the truth of the matter is, is that you will never be able to stop somebody from doing what they're going to do. Right. Whatever that may mean. So, um, so the best thing that a sponsor does is that they live in recovery Mm -hmm. and that's the best picture you can get for what life can be. Yeah. You know, um, will they show up at your door? Uh, if you call and say, you know, I'm just having an intense day. Absolutely. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's, and that's key because first of all, it's that person to taking responsibility and saying, I'm having a bad day. Right. And secondly, it's that person that they called shows up. Right. And they realize, oh, you know, somebody's well, going to show up for me. And, and that's the thing too, is like, you know, as people, you know, there's there's a, a wide variety of, of things where we, we 
we're not <laughs> this is gonna sound really silly i tell people i'm a pastor i'm not psychic <laughs> right i i can look at people and sometimes i can read the signs and be like you're having a rough day tell me what's going on right but a lot of times if you're at home and i'm not in front of you un unless unless i'm in prayer and the, and the holy spirit the, the lord you know hey put something on my mind yeah, you need to call this person unless that happens a lot of times i can't tell if someone in the community who is you know if they're like i can't right I can't tell if someone is struggling with the press unless, you know, unless I'm looking at them like, you know what, there's something off, what's going on. Right. But that's me already there. If you're two o'clock in the morning, you're struggling with suicidal thoughts, depression's hitting hard, right? You're isolated, you're alone. Okay. I don't know. Right. Right. How we don't, we you? don't know. How would you know? Right. Exactly. You, you know, first. Right. So it's that responsibility to reach out and say, I need a lifeboat. I need, right something i i need i need i need a buddy so you need to understand that when you are having those kinds of thoughts or those kinds of feelings that um that they're not wrong right but they're not right and so you know you you have to get past this whole idea that somebody's going to judge you somebody's going to right. Uh, reject you or anything like that you need to you need to put it in your head that um, this is not real because it's not mm -hmm. depression it I mean it feels real and everything else but the truth of the matter is, is what you're what you're intensifying or everything whatever it is that's going on in your head um, it's not an actual real thing you right. know because uh, reality is is that if you get rid of that, um, you you will live a, a happy life. I mm -hmm. mean, that's a real simplified way of looking. It at is it. A simplified, yeah. And you know, but the reason why I I, I kind of wanted to do this today was because the last one we did was on value. Right. You this is an actual follow up. Right. And and so depression is the lack of value, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, within yourself. And, um, you know, and, and here's the thing is that if you can just ride it out, you know, it gets better. It really does. Yeah. And, you know, and I don't know, uh, how long that'll take, you know, but I'm, I promise you that if you just ride it out, it will get better, you know, and, and, and depression is a, um, um, it can be scary for some people like, there were times when I had idealized, what do you call it? Idealization of mm -hmm. suicide. Yeah. You know, I had thoughts where it literally went all the way to the process of when my moment in life would end, mm. you know, yeah. whether it was, you know, should I just drive my car into another car or yeah. my bike or, or take a gun or pills or hang myself, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they were all, you know, and and I thought, what in the hell is wrong with me? Right. You know, why am I thinking this way? Because my life isn't that bad. Right. Why is that? You know. And that's when I realized that 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 was that. Um, I want to, I want to blame it on my addiction. Mm -hmm. You know, that was that addict trying to take me back over. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 uh, placing those that those nasty thoughts in my head again yeah you know because you i mean throughout recovery you you have to retrain your brain how to think this way first rather than this way first yeah you know and and uh it takes time and and there's a process and you know and, and um you know and i i bet there are people who have 20 years 30 years who right. still have those issues you know, but the thing is, is that each little issue that somebody gets to, they feel a little more confident about being able to get through the next one. Yeah. You well, know? and it's kind of like this whole idea of like, you know, it's a process. You're, you're, you're re, you, you are literally rewiring your brain, thinking the way you ought to think, seeing yourself the way you ought to see yourself, recognizing that you have value and, and, but, and then I get, and I like what you say, it does get better. You just, you just got to keep in the process, right. you know, stay, stay in the fight that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. There is something there. 
and it, it takes a process. But again, I, I like how you point out it's different for everybody. Yeah. You know, some people have gotten, um, and and the reason why it's different for everybody is, and I think about all these factors. I think about what is the home life like. You know, family, friends, um, extended family. What is what is what is the personal history of every individual? Where has that brought them? How's that shaped their thinking? Right. You know, what is what is their their current environment? Where are they living? Where what neighborhood are they in? And how does that sh- again shape their thinking? Um, all these different factors. What what were they addicted to? What was the what was the what was the compound and how has that shaped their thinking? Right. And and so you're having to take all these different stories and over you know X amount of years in application and say, okay, you you have to go through this there's a process that you're gonna you're gonna journey through. Right. And for someone might be a different place than you are, doesn't mean that they're stronger, doesn't mean that they're better, doesn't mean that they are, are greater than you in any way. It just means that they're in a different spot than you right. are. And you have to know that you're not the worst person in the world. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're just not, you know, no matter what you may think of yourself, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, I, I just, I think that, uh, like I, I relate to this mm-hmm. particular uh, subject because I, I did go through some depression and mm-hmm. it was very intense, you know, and, and I, like I said, I had, there was a period where, you know, I, I, I was sure this is where I was going, you yeah. know, yeah. Um, you know, and um, so what helped me because I want to get to that part too. Oh, absolutely. Is that, um, so in the program, uh, they tell you to take it one day at a time, you mm-hmm. know, for using, you know, just don't use today, right? Yeah. Well, sometimes that has to be shortened, you know, just don't use for this hour. Sometimes it can be shortened to just don't use this minute, mm-hmm. you know. Well, that can that, that can be applied to depression, you know. Okay, for right now, this moment, let's not... Um, let's not do anything rash, right. you know, uh, for this hour, let's just try to get through this, you know, uh, for this day, let's just, let's just go ahead and try to get through this day, you know, and, and, and tomorrow will be a little better, you know, yeah. and, and it, it actually, um, works, mm-hmm. you know, when you, uh, of course you have to bring it to the forefront of your mind, like, okay, this too will pass, you know, right. um, you know, but, uh, Taking it sometimes at moments, just a moment at a time, uh, is a little easier than being like, well, you know, I got to deal with this the whole day. Yeah. You know, if you can just deal with it for that moment, you know, and it's something that will yeah. always happen. You know, yeah. if you got pets or whatever, you know, or you see something outside, the sun comes out, you know, it'll make you feel just a little bit warm yeah. inside. And, and it takes just, you know, maybe a fraction of that depression it lightens that load a little have you ever heard the the this 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 phrase how do you eat an elephant no one <laughs> one bite at a time okay it, it, <laughs> makes, it, sense. it yeah. makes sense but that's the thing we can look at the big picture and when we're trying to look at the big picture of things like oh look all that i have to do look all that i'm right. trying to accomplish right. i i cannot even process tomorrow and like right. you look at the big picture and it's very overwhelming right you know and you're, you're stuck in it Right, but like you say, if you take moment by moment, if you take the right. little the, the just just the consistent little steps, right. next thing you know, the elephant's gone. Right. Next thing you know, you've made it through the week, you've made it through the month, right. not intending to. You were just doing one little step right. at a time. And to kind of touch on what you're saying, so for an for someone who's uh, in recovery, um, in in we'll say the first maybe two years of it. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I don't know how long that length goes for some people, but mm-hmm. you know, your intensity isn't about just right now. Right. A lot of times, a lot of times it's everything that happened and everything that you're, you're looking at, like, how am I going to do all this? Right. You know, and look at all the crap I did and, and you know, and it's like crushing you yeah. in the middle, you know? And so it can be really intense yeah. and, you know, but, like you said, if you can just one moment at a time or one step at a time, you know, um, you know, it doesn't have to, everything has to be, doesn't have to be done at once. It's just, and not only that, it's just not possible to do right. everything at once, but you know, um, dealing with your past will come, 
you yeah. know um, but it'll come once you start to really find yourself moving forward yeah so for me I think that the best idea for somebody in recovery is to say to acknowledge yes I have a past right okay but right now we're not gonna focus on that we're gonna focus on how am I moving how am I gonna move forward you know because right. then once you get to a certain point and the steps go through this in yeah. the program, you know, but once you get to a certain point, then, you know, because usually by the time you get to the point where you got to, you, you're going to kind of look back in the mirror, mm -hmm. you know, or in the rear view mirror, um, you have uh, a little bit of time under your belt and you have some understanding and, right. you know, and so um, it'll be dealt with, you right. know. And, and once it is dealt with, it takes, that, some, like I said, you know, that weight off, yeah. you know. And then if you also look at uh, where you're headed, um, you know, it's okay to look ahead and, and be like, well, this is where I want to be. But what you need to understand is that, you, you know, um, not everybody went from, uh, you know, one day to 20 years. Right. It just didn't happen that way. It went one day at a time. So you're going to have to take those. Th those moments, those those days, those steps, and um, you know, and it's okay to have goals, mm -hmm. and actually, it's encouraged. I I think it's a great idea to have goals oh, yeah. because then you have purpose, yeah. and when you have purpose, you know, you feel a little bit better about what you're doing. But you have to, you can't just uh, move from eight, point A to point B without you know going yeah through. The, well, let's say like. Just taking little stuff. Driving in this sense is a great analogy. When you know, when, when you go through drivers that they teach you, you know, check all your mirrors, check ahead, look, look, look in advance of where you're going, but right. then also make sure you look at your instrument panels on what you're doing right now. And so you constantly have your head and your eyes on a swivel, making right. sure that, you know, I know where I've I know where I've come from, you know, but I also have a goal on where I'm going. I'm present in the moment. This is what's happening in the vehicle right now. This is what's right in front of me. And then here's my my direct here the here the here's my goal this is where i'm going in this rock it's actually a great example because yeah. um when you're first in recovery you need to pay attention to all that yeah. you know years down the road though like after you've been driving for 20 years or whatever get the car it's automatic yeah you, you don't you even i mean your your mind is already it's focused on where you're going yeah but you still have the mind of being able to kind of see it in your peripheral so you understand what everything is doing and you don't check it like every moment you right. know whereas when yeah. you're first in recovery you're checking every moment because you know you're in t you're kind of you're relearning how to drive well you're learning how yeah. to drive learning how to drive and yeah. so that's a good point because in recovery you're learning how to live yeah you know because uh no matter what you think you know about living because prior to using, you right. know, you were probably living, right? Right. Well, things are different. You know, yeah. your mind is different. Uh, the way that you react to things, everything is different. So you have to relearn it. No matter what you think you used to be, right. you're not anymore. Yeah. You know, and and that's okay. Right. You know, it's okay. You know, if you, if you can take some time... You know, uh, like some people, they do accolades, you know, mm -hmm. they'll sit in the mirror and say, you know, you're a good person. Right. You know, you deserve to be, you know, to, well, to live a good life. Reminders, you're retraining. And, and that's right. And that's, you know, that's, yeah, I think that, um, so I wasn't um, the person that did that in a mirror or wrote it down or anything like that. Yeah. But up here, you know, in, in, in here, yeah. um, you know, I had to remind myself that, um, that, that I was okay, you know, right. to change some of those thoughts, mm -hmm. you know, because your first thought is you're a piece of shit. Right. Wait a minute. No, I'm not. You know, right. oh, yes, you are. No, I'm not. Well, then, you know, over time, that that little voice that's negative and, and beating down on you starts to quiet. Yeah. And the other voice becomes more prevalent, you know, and, um, and that's just time mm -hmm. and practice and just like in, just like driving yeah you know it takes time and practice you know you you have to you have to give yourself uh the okay to take that time yeah. well you it, know and in the way the depression if we can i'm gonna insert this here is okay. that voice is so louder it's the depression mm -hmm. makes that your, your junk mm -hmm. your driving's awful 
right. you're not good at this and that depression just makes that really loud right and you you have to sit there and this is and again this is this is the fight is you have to choose and get help to not listen to that very loud voice right. and and that's why you know having that having that help having that sponsor having that friend having someone that you can call to say hey look this 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 voice is really loud today right. okay great that's what a meeting is great for when you start yeah. to have those kinds of moments you know because you get involved with a bunch of people who uh some of them may be going through the same thing yeah. you know but the thing is is so depression is also very sneaky yeah you know um i could be having a great day and right. then all of a sudden it hits and for the next 20 minutes it's intense you yeah. know and but it's irrational yeah you know because well, I, I because i'm not looking at like oh for the last 23 and a half hours it was a great day yeah i'm looking at oh my god something's wrong bro. you know and and it's it's not yeah. so it's 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 irrational yeah you know uh, and um and it can be really intense but if you can recognize it and 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 um Call your sponsor, or yeah. go to a meeting, or call your pastor. Yeah. You know that's okay. Well, here's here, here, here's, or, or anything else. Here, here's a funny uh, pastoral side of depression, is I could we could I and I say I because I've I've experienced this. I could have a fantastic Sunday morning worship service. Everything went great, right? Mm -hmm. People were there. Music sounded good. Sometimes it doesn't sound good. That's okay. You know, I, I I go from that, and then the service is over. Everyone's gone home. We've had lunch. I get home, and I'm instantly down. The 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 excitement has all worn off. Rode that high. Oh, it, it came out, and then I'm you cry you crash. I mean, there's you get tired. I mean, you just you are exhausted. You're depressed. You just you're doubting everything you've done. Um, and this I mean this is this is me going through this. You know you feel that you hit that crash everything's wrong and you're just like oh my goodness yeah and you you you're thinking about all the stress i i've heard i you know we some many pastors joke some don't joke but many pastors will joke that we will preach on monday we'll uh, we'll preach on sunday we'll quit on monday but wait no nope, someone's got to do my job so i'll come back on tuesday <laughs> you know yeah. but it, it's and it's interesting because you know i i it, it's one thing i've been there you know, you can have these great moments, but then that sneaky little switch is flipped and you're instantly down. And you've got to have help. You've got to have something that's going to pull you up. See, for me, my thing that helps get me out of that, I call it my, my, my weekly funk. Because I, I expect it now. And But for what helps me so, so wonderfully is I have a, a support system. Um, I have people that I can talk to. Not only that, but then on our Sunday nights is when we have our prayer meal, our prayer gathering. And that just it that one just refreshes me. It's right. not a drain. It's not a draw. So I go from making this crash to coming to the prayer group where like no guys we're here to pray and I'm I just I'm instantly refreshed. Sunday night after the prayer meeting, I'm ready to go back to work. I'm ready to get keep going, keep moving. I made it through, but I had that support, right? And I have to sit there and I have to I have to follow that out, knowing that you know Sunday afternoon those are rough. But guess what? That. I know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel, and I just gotta right. ride this out. I'll be, I'll be fine. So uh, this may sound real weird, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Well, but what? <laughs> so um, when I go to Valley Fair, mm -hmm. I, I like to take roller coasters. Oh yeah. Because you know, I mean, who doesn't? Yeah. But so that first time you're going up. Yeah. And then you're going way down, right? You feel that chest right in here. Well, it's just, you know, but as the ride goes on, those those ups and downs are not quite as, as intense yeah. because, you know, it's losing its um, momentum, mm -hmm. you know? And and I and uh, I, I think that that's kind of how depression can act. Is, yeah. You know, if you can just kind of ride out the ride to the end, um, you can get off the ride. But it's yeah. going to lessen because it slowly has to lose its momentum. Yeah. Because originally you're giving it that momentum because you're right. like all like, you know, and then up and down, you know. And then, you know, an hour later, you might end up back on that ride again. But guess what? It's going to level itself yeah. out again, you know. And um, so 
for depression, it's um, it has its intense moments, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, sometimes that can last longer right. for different people. You know, yeah. for me, a lot of times when I would have my my moments of depression, it could last a few hours of just really intense. Mm -hmm. But um, if if I could refocus myself on something else, you know, whether it's TV cleaning. Uh, take the dogs for a walk, whatever it yeah. may be. Um, um, that roller coaster ride because it stays with you right. while you're doing it. But as you go through those steps of doing something different, um, yeah. it, it slowly will but, well, find its way to a more level plane. You're you're choosing instead of focusing on that voice, focusing on right. that 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 loud, that loud. You're you're an idiot. You're junk. You know, focusing on that depressive whatever that whatever that lie lie is. Right. Whatever that's being perpetrated in there, and you're 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 focusing your mind actively on other things. Right. It it you kind of lose the focus of it. Like it's still there, but it's not. It, your mind's engaged in other things, right. and so you're 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 taking your attention off of that. I, it's I, from I kinda, like a loud voice to white noise. Yeah, kind of. yeah. yeah. It'll slowly kind of work. Well, that, kind of. So I've had, I've done this, and I'm really I'm really stupid about it. Um, I will play solitaire on my phone, and if a TV is in the background, I'll be watching a movie, but I'm like, ah, I want to play solitaire, but the movie is still on. So I'll start playing solitaire on my phone. Movie going in the background, and that movie just. Yeah. Next thing you know, the show's over, and I go, "What happened? I missed it. I was playing solitaire." Right. You know, and that's kind of how it is that, that, that you're, you're choosing just to kind of let the voices transition. Right. It's still there, but you're, you're, you're training your mind to go in a different direction. Right. And just for uh, the purpose of those who may be going through depression, um, no one's saying it's easy. It's yeah. not easy. No. Uh, you know, it, it just takes time mm -hmm. to really kind of work your way through those things. It, 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 it takes time and it's well, not a bad thing to get, get help. It's not, it's not, don't go on your own. Don't isolate. Um, and you're not alone. I think that's the big yeah, thing is you, I, you're a lot not of people, alone. Not alone in that. Because there's a, a, I mean, probably everybody in, in their life at some point has had some, some level of depression. Well, you, know. you you shared your moments. You right. shared what you've gone through, and I, I shared a, a little window of what I go through. Right. And and I think that's can be really encouraging to recognize. Oh, these people go through moments where they are really down. Right. Well, um, mine was years. Yeah. I, I mean, it was years that I I yeah. went through. It, you know. So and that can intensify too. You know? And it's, it does it varies person by person. Right. Right. But it's, you're never alone. There's always somebody who knows. Right. Yeah, and I there, that's a huge thing. And there was something I was gonna say, but I lost it for a second. <laughs> uh, that was, um, um, oh, I was gonna, I was gonna say that you know, um, sometimes depression comes from uh, things that happen to you, not yeah. rather than things that you've done. Mm -hmm. And so, it, it, if you can, if you can recognize that you know you had. If something happened to you and, and and that's why it's causing depression if you can look at the fact that you didn't have um a responsibility in that um that that it's it's somebody else's mm -hmm. and and um you know it's kind of a this i don't know how to say it it's kind of this power thing where um you if you take control back over uh, on those incidents and say you know what you know, this wasn't my fault. Mm -hmm. This wasn't uh, on me. Um, and you take that that power back of you know, because so sometimes it's a helpless yeah. feeling. Well, you know, yeah. And and understand that 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 it's not your fault. Yeah. Um, you you can get away from away from that whole idea that somehow uh, you're the bad person in that, or mm -hmm. you're the one who caused it. You know, if, if you can really rationalize to the point where you see that, um, you know, and, and I don't know what that may be because it'd be different things for different people. But, you know, if you could get away from that, because that causes depression. Well, yeah, you know, it, it, where... we take we we take other people's actions yeah. and we attribute them to ourselves right. we where, you way. know, someone someone committed act A. Right. Oh, I committed act A. 
Well, and that, yeah. it, it, a variance. Yeah. We we, right. we 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 own other people's actions. Yes. When we shouldn't. Or we, why did they do this to me? What yeah. what's wrong with me that they? Yeah. You know. And well, really, there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. It's it, that was all on them. No, yeah, that was their you, You're going to react in a way. Right. You 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 will have to own your reaction. Sure. But don't don't sit there and yeah make that what they like they acted they right. did something and that can cause you depression because you're owning something that you had no control over right and people will hold on to that stuff for 50 years oh yeah because they i mean it kind of becomes a, a part of who they are yeah you know and, and you don't need to let that be who you a part of who you are you know if you can Look at the situation in a uh, rational, and sometimes you have to take yourself out of it, right? To see it for what it is, and sometimes, which is what I love about the program, is that um, I don't even have to take myself out of my own situation. Someone else will talk about their situation. I'll be like, oh, well, that was, you yeah. know, kind of the same thing, you know, and, yeah. And and then you think to yourself, well, why are you holding on to that? And then it kind of points back, like, why am I holding on to this? But it's, you know? that, it's so, that, that forced outside perspective. Right. Whether yeah. somebody somebody has a shared experience or somebody's right. saying something and you're you're looking at your life, instead of internalizing everything, you're now right. looking at this outside perspective and you're like, wait a minute. Right. I because see, what I would you say to somebody else? You know, what right. you know, and that's that's the whole thing, is that we have a tendency to um, look at other people and be like, well, you should do this or you should do that. Right. But then we have this block yeah. for ourselves where it's like, well, I don't know what to do. You know, well, I can, I um, can, I can forgive you for being a bad parent. Mind. I can forgive that, but I'm not going to forgive myself. Right. And you, so you have to open your mind a little bit, you know, and, and that takes time and, yeah. it, and it, it's hard to do. Um, but again, I think that the key to depression is to not, um, isolate yourself, but to, um, to just kind of move forward. You know, I know it's, it can be intense mm -hmm. and I know it can be, uh, um, very heavy on, on you and, and it can, um, sometimes cause some real rational thoughts. Yeah. But if you can just kind of try to ride it through, you know, you, you can get to a, a point where um, where you realize that uh, depression, you know, I think that some depression in life is probably healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know because I'm well, not it a, exists. It exists for a purpose. Right. But I, I think that if you can get it to a point where, um, you know, it's not an intense, uh, I'm going to go out and do something to myself or I'm going to go get high because I can't handle this no more. You can just ride it out till it levels out. It all, it, each ride will be a little bit less, more intense, and it can, you know, and and you can get through it. the The thing is, is is that um, the people. So to get to the people that are around mm -hmm. that person, you know, um, you know, uh, there's nothing you can do. Right. You can't change them. You can't. You know, the only thing that you can do is make them aware. That whenever they need you, that you're going to show up, right? And and that means you actually have to show up, you know, um, because uh, addicts are very finical, finicky, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. They we um, see he didn't show up for me, so you know can't count on him, right? You know, yeah. well, but then that applies to everybody else because uh, that's how yeah. you know that's how messed up we are, yeah. You know, so wow. um, so you know. It's okay to have boundaries. Don't get me wrong, you know. Right. Um, but you know, the the whole idea is is um, if, if the addict can become healthy, that makes our community better. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, and because then that's one less person who's out there doing damage in in the right. community, and you know, and and so. And, and not all of them do a lot of damage. I, I, mm -hmm. There's, you know, different... It's a, it's a spectrum. There's right, different, you know. Different applications. So I, I, I don't want everybody to assume that every addict or every alcoholic is just, you know, 
killing the community, you right? Because that's that's not how it really is. But because um, there are some who function right in life, and you don't even know, you know, that they're addicts or alcoholics. You know, there 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 are those who can hide it real well. Yeah. Um, I would say a majority of us cannot. You know, we mm. maybe for a little while, <laughs> right? But then it gets to a point where there's no hiding it anymore, and you don't even care. Yeah. You know, so but um, you know, I'm just saying, like, you know, just if you can, you know, because I don't want somebody in the community to uh, feel uh, like uh, they have to compromise their own life mm -hmm. to cater to somebody who's done their own damage to their own life. Right. You know, but if you can show up for that person, it, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. You know, somebody will, um, uh, they will always hold on to that. Right. Those those would be the moments where um, where they will always see you as uh, somebody that is meaningful in their life. Yeah, you know, those are the kinds of moments that build those kinds of relationships. Oh, and those are huge. You know? Yeah, and and uh, especially when somebody's in their worst moments, mm -hmm. you know, if you can be there without judgment and and just. You know, just be there. Sometimes right. that's all you need to do. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's helpful to the person going through it. And you know, I I mean, it, it's such a sticky subject to me because mm -hmm. you know because I know how it feels, and I I you know I remember you know the intensity in it, and you know, but the funny thing is, I also remember those people who uh, showed up. Yeah. And and today some of those people are my best friends. Yeah. Like, oh, I yeah. would I not that I rely on them, but I would um you know, I would do anything for them. Well, I mean, you know, within reason, but yeah. you know what I mean. But yeah. you know, anytime they call me, I'm there, you know, because yeah. it's like, you know what? And 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 it's formed a bond that that I never had when I was using mm -hmm. you know so that's another positive in it is that you know you, you form these bonds and, and sometimes that's where you find it is in the darkest hole you know yeah. where you find your strongest bond <laughs> that is true you know and so um yeah I, I don't know that i have a whole lot more to say on that no no but I, this I is just good. yeah I, I really feel like it you know it just needs to be noticed at least yeah. you know i don't know what can be done about depression for anybody um you know where they need to get help like i don't have the answers to it mm -hmm. but i i feel like it needs to be recognized and, and understood that yeah. um there there is depression and and it causes uh it can cause chaos for an addict in recovery yeah well and, that, and that's the and that's the beauty like like so i i think a great focus to kind of conclude this one on is simply this that be be mindful of of what they're going through you know right. their, their mental state the depression that they're facing and and realizing that as a community uh, and kind of the big overarching theme on every discussion is like we we want you to have as many tools as possible and so the big one for this is recognizing that they 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 need your people in depression addict or not they need your support they they need support they need um they need someone to, to lift them up out of the hole and they need to know that they have value they need to know that they have value they need to know that someone's coming that someone's gonna reach into the pit and say i'm not gonna leave you there right. you know i'm gonna pull you up and you know that and that's where we kind of have this and so like when when someone calls be present be there you know um can i correct one thing though please please okay uh, um it's not that you're going to pull them up it's that you're going to uh, uh mow the path for them yeah so that they can see a path to get out you know because i don't feel like anybody can do something for me right you know that i mean they can they can maybe badger me about it or they can you know be like you know yeah. come on you're coming with me but guess what the moment that i'm not in your sight uh, i'm right. back over here and so um that doesn't work but but you know if yeah. if you make a path with little flowers on there you know something i enjoy or whatever or yeah not enjoy but you know something that i 
I'm looking forward to. Um, I'm probably gonna walk down that path with oh, you. I, I, and I'm ex- Does I, that make sense? Yeah. You, okay. in, in my head, I'm I'm, I'm not picturing of like pulling up a. a sorry, this is gonna sound really terrible. I'm not pulling up a wet a wet noodle. Right. You know, I'm not gonna sit there and pull up somebody who's just like doesn't want to be pulled up. Right. I'm gonna pull you up. You're gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give you the assist. Right. Like that's. The, I'm. I'm gonna give you the assist. Here's. This is where help is. Right. You gotta help me get you out. Like right. I'm gonna like, and I, that's what I'm saying. That pull up is like, I imagine somebody like, getting their feet and kicking up the walls of the pit as they're coming up out with somebody saying, "Here, here's my hand. Here's a here's a hold for right, you." Right. Right. And so that's that's my mentality. So we're right. saying the same things, just using different words. Right. But that and that and that really it's is, okay is, to sit with them in their own. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, I'm sorry if I, you know, but it's okay with to just sit there with them on that too, you know. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to have a plan or <laughs> no. Sometimes it just, you know. A lot of the, a lot of the times when I've had to help people who were uh, coming out of the junk, is literally <laughs> just me just, <laughs> yeah, habits. Uh, part of it most most of the times whenever I I've, I've been involved on that end, I've just been sitting there. Yeah. Sometimes very just, very little no no words you know just just sitting there yeah giving comfort and that and that is it and we i don't want to minimize how important that is because i can make it sound like oh it's so simple it's so easy and it and in one regards it is yeah. you know in perspective in perspective is, right in perspective it is in, in the reality moment, it's, it, it, it's a it's lot messy. it is messy yeah. And and that's where it's so important is like you know, it is it's the process is messy, but the ease to get it done is a, is a simple kind. It's of a thing. very simple thing, right, right? And and when you really love someone, you're willing to sit with them in the junk. Right. You're not going to leave them in the junk, right? When they're ready to get their bootstraps up, you're going and they're going to get moving again. You'll be right there, ready for them, right? We're not gonna leave them there, but I'm gonna be here until you're ready. Right. And you're gonna and, and like that being that present and and being that help. So when they call and ask for help, right. be there. And and that's and that's a huge thing, you know. And I think we can really from alongside people. And then of course understanding that for some people, again, I, I just as I rehash the in closing here, is for some people there it there is the 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 brain chemicals and how the body deals with depression and that right. sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's really hard and sometimes sometimes medicine's going to be involved and this this is a process mm. and it's a messy process but it's a process that you can have victory in that you can defeat right. this right and you you just gotta you just gotta you gotta get them to walk with you help you blaze that path for you to walk on and you keep going forward in it and um and, you know for those for the community side of things don't don't be scared don't be scared because if we're scared and we're acting out of that fear all we're doing is making that that voice of depression louder and and we we have a part to play you know i mean that's the thing it's like oh i'm not going to touch you because oh you've got this no no that's the wrong move to make well i, I and sometimes i think that people don't necessarily don't want to be around it they just don't know how to right be, be, handle it you know they yeah. don't they don't understand it maybe mm-hmm. or they just you know it's like uh you know um how do you even approach right. something you know uh, because it, it's sort of a taboo in, yeah in, I, in it life, is. Yes. you know and um and yet we're looking at all these people who are killing themselves and and or using drugs to the point where they die, you know, yeah. and we're like, well, why is this happening? Well, you know, yeah, uh, it's happening because people are um, not happy. They're depressed. Yeah, they're and, depressed. and, you know, and so if we stop seeing it as as, as kind of a taboo and, and start seeing it as just something in life, um, we could probably approach it a little more mm-hmm. uh, with ease. You know, yeah. like, oh, well, you're depressed. Okay. You know, what can we do? Yeah. How can we help? You know, yeah. or do you just want me to sit with you? It's 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 okay to just let them be depressed. It, right. You know, I'm not saying, you know, tell them jokes and make them happy and all that. That's right. not, 
that's not even probably going to help. No, it, it might. I don't know. You know, but that, that, and that's what I'm saying that, that you know counseling, you medicine, sure, all that know, stuff in there. It, it, it there's all kinds of avenues. You know, but um, sometimes the best avenue is just to sit with somebody and just, and and not because you're watching them. Don't you know to right. make sure they ain't going to do something at that moment. No. But because you care enough about another human being that you don't want them to, to, to do something damaging to themselves. Be a friend. And maybe because you have some understanding of what that yeah. feels like. Be a, be a friend. Well, yeah, just be a good human person. Be a, be a, be a, be a good person. <laughs> yeah. Be a good man. And I'm, and it, the, don't take that wrong. I'm not saying that people yeah. who don't are, are bad people. No. That's not the case. I'm just saying, you know, um, this is another human being. Yeah. Well, and, the, the importance of... Quite literally, just being present for somebody. Right. It's, it's, it speaks volumes. It really you know, does. Depression, there are levels where there's lots of count, professional counseling that might be needed. Right. But Medicaid, those are things that the person who is depressed is going to have to see. They're going to have to go they through that can't, themselves. You know, they're, they're never going to be pushed into it. Right. You know, and, um, and if they are pushed into it, they're going to buck it the whole time. Yeah. So, well, and, that, and that's an important thing, too. Yeah. Is like, so you're best to just kind of let that natural process for them yeah. happen. They've and got to for go those through. who are in depression, yeah, I'm saying, you know, just ride it out. You know, yeah. like you'll get through it. And and if you feel like you know you need to seek some help in your in your moments of clarity, mm-hmm. you know, where you're not feeling that intensity, then do that. You right. know, but make sure you do it. Follow through. You know, because otherwise you're just feeding that beast, and it's it's just going to yeah. intensify even more. The goal is move towards health. The goal is right. You know, for for the ones who are in active depression, going through depression, it's okay. It, it's you're good. okay. You're, you're you're okay. You have value. You have value. Go out, go after help. Conquer that beast. Right. For for those that are around, uh, the community that's in that's observant, be a good person. Be a friend. Just be present, and and then and then and be that aid when they ask for it. So, right um, we're gonna go ahead and conclude right here. And uh, we are so thankful that you took time out of your day to join us. We hope that you have a wonderful time, and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye.